feature extraction tool using raise filters this is the work uh, which i have done along with shaker sir in fact i am i have i had a privilege to work with him as i had a privilege to be his student so this raise function is an l2 measurable function from r to r continuously derivable function from r to r and hilbert function is defined as this is a mathematical definition of it okay and when this is this is generalized into d dimensional euclidean space now here it is defined on l2 r this is defined on the real space when it is generalized to d dimensional euclidean space we get raised transformation okay uh, so this is a um, function from rd to rd now d dimensional space to d dimensional space and it is um, given by this definition okay let us consider d as 2 first okay we'll see what happens when we take d is equal to 2 okay uh, let me not take consider this okay when i consider this hi okay let me take one one point here see the each one of this okay this defines in general the fun, uh, in general raise transformation of a input function fx whereas these are the components of those functions when considered uh, with the dimensions different dimensions okay this is we can say when it is taken the this is the first one h1 convoluted with the function f and this is the second uh, component convoluted with f this is component d convoluted with f etc when i take each hi here considering the definition given over here considering the definition given over here each hi can be considered like this it is the norm of norm function the of gamma function i'm sorry gamma function of d1 gamma of d1 plus divided by 2 and it is the ith component of this function of this um cd dimensional space ith component of the um, tuple there considering this if we take only two dimension if we take only two dimension we get hx as something like this okay uh, consider only two components here x and y hx is defined something like this and hy second kernel is defined like this like you can consider ith kernel here by giving by taking the um, say three dimensional or four dimensional tuples here okay so this gives me first raised kernel and this gives me the second raised kernel in the two dimensional space when we um, say take some values are 3 by 3 raised kernel these are the values you can calculate okay similarly 5 by 5 or um, 15 by 15 values can be calculated here 15 and the size of raised kernels of size 15 by 15 can be calculated so this is a raised kernel of size 3 by 3 now okay you can refer this we published a paper for this raised transforms okay with this 2d uh, raised kernels we can consider 2d raised filters okay when convolute um, convolve this kernels with your function you get with your, with your 2d functions you get 2d raised kernels something like this and okay this slide gives me then unwrapped iris ixy 
um, taken with a single dimensional line okay or, or else you can say 1d raised 1d signal one dimensional signal of unwrapped iris here and convolved with the raised kernel hx you get one this is the 1d this is the image which is convolved with the um, hx part it, and this is a slice slice of that one 1D component of that. Similarly, when you convolved with HY, we get this part of that. This is input iris, convolved with HX, convolved with HY. And these three are the signals in one dimension. So what we do here is take the input IXY. This is the unwrapped iris. We have already two kernels, HX and HY two raised kernels, hx and h1, in case of two dimension. Okay. Convolve those, the convolve that input image with hx and hy. Okay. The, with the output, we, we get two, uh, you can say two functions. With the input image ixy, ixy, we get two values here, two outputs. One is convolved with hx and another one is convolved with hy, call them as hxi and hyi. Similarly, if you convolve it again, see this is hx, the one which is obtained by convolving with hx, you convolve the same thing with hx itself, we get second order components. So these are these two are the first order raised components, they are also called as monogenic raised components. And these are called as second order raised components. When the first order convolved with HX itself, second one is either HX or HY convolved with the other one. Okay, HXI and HYX are same, same here. So you get this second component. And when HY is convolved, HYI is convolved with HY itself, we get the third component. So these two are the first order and these three are the second order raised components. Then we calculate the binary iris image okay, by taking the face, uh, using the same method as um, Dogman's Kaber 2D face encoding here. Uh, if this image, the first one, HXS, or you, you can consider any one of this here, is greater than or equal to zero, encode it as one, if it is less than zero, encode it as zero, okay, zero, taking the zero crossing. So this will give us three, uh, two bit coding. The first uh, components will give us two bit coding, whereas second components will give us three bit encoding of this input iris. It's a pixel, we can say. And we called it as RFIC, the use filter based iris code RFIC1. <laughs> Um, you can consider this. These are the, this is the algorithm to compute the first, the raised kernels actually. This is, this is calculating raised kernel here. And you can give the size, maybe 3 by 3, 15 by 15, something like that. So it will return the two, um, you can say, um, two matrices. R1 and R2, two raised kernels of given size. And this calculate the, calculates the first raised transformation. H, uh, I have, we have called it as HX and H1. Using the first order, uh, using these raised kernels along with the size, you can give the size here. This, calculate, this is the algorithm to calculate the first order raised transformation here. Which returns to HX and HY. Similarly, this algorithm, it's similar to that, calculates the third, second order raised transformations HX, HXY, and HYY. Okay. Now, this is the design for RFIC1. You have unwrapped input iris and two raised kernels, HX and HY, convolve this input iris with these two kernels. You 
uh, the output you are obtaining is hxi and hyi you can see the clear images here filtered images the go with the next uh, level get the third order compo second order components hxxi hxy and hyy i mean with these two images use again the kernels here raise kernels here and you get the second order components here and from these you go with the zero crossings here okay um, these two will give this will give a bit this will give another bit and these three will generate three more bits so we get i uh, this one rf ic1 with a given image um, each pixel is encoded with five binary bits here with the uh, first one i rf ic1 next one is so this is one iris code another one we can try with raised wavelets is stereoval raised wavelets here say raised functions are stereoval that means you can represent a uh, orientation of this raised functions they oriented at theta oriented by theta i should say this can be obtained these are the components these are the uh, raised components this can be obtained by taking a a uh, so linear sum of each component convolved with an orientation function each raised component here is convolved with an orientation function take the linear sum of it that will be the raised that that is a oriented result of raised function oriented transformation of raised function what we have done here is referring to this paper here what we have done is we have taken a steering matrix m theta which is given by this and our three components here it is a component of the of um, say this is we can say dth component of it so we have taken first second components here h x x h y y and h x y so this that this is operated with a steering matrix and taking taken the taking omega 1 omega 2 and omega 3 we have taken the linear sum of it and initially we have started omega 1 omega 2 and omega 3 as 1 equal to 1 okay this gives us stereoval raised function and we can vary theta here in this equation we can take different thetas so taking say for example six orientation may not be six on this so example we take six orientation like this starting from zero then with each uh, theta value here we get a value q x y a matrix so that e uh, the ultimately we get a matrix of six values 0 1 2 3 4 5 because we have um, we it, this gives the say when we take theta is equal to 6 this gives us finally uh, which one is having the ma maximum argument okay so it may be 0 1 it may be first one it may say second value of theta etc so that when we one minute when we consider here when we have a stereoval raise uh, operation here our input iris code will be converted into a matrix of um, say values from 1 to 6 this gives us the matrix of values from 1 to 6 and then those values are encoded into 3 bit binary code because we want it ultimately as a binary code here in this case so we, these values are converted into three bit binary code you can see this here um this is calculating the stereoval raised matrix raised theta value it gives you the r back here okay so it has calculated take you can give the value as uh, 
uh, like I have taken the example of six there. You can give the um, different values for the n to get the answer finally. So that this is a design for the is filter based diary score at RFIC two. We have unwrapped iris input iris, and um, here there is along with the two iris along with the two um, say you can say um, raised filters we have also taken a gaber filter here one bit is from gaber filter one bit is from um, horizontal raised filter another bit from xy hy so these gives us three bits here for each input code these gives us three bits using the zero crossing similarly steerable raise gives us three more bits okay after uh, using raise steerable filter here these these give us three more bits and input iris is encoded into 3 plus 3 this is the bit level fusion fusion means here simply we have appended these three bits after this so first three bits are from these first order gaber and raise and these three bits are from steerable raise code finally input iris is encoded into six bits so this is the second iris code here okay and in this case the noise removal strategy was you take see this part Uh, consider this iris part we have divided this iris into as four parts you can see here and we can see this part is having less um, so you can say it is not a candidate iris part it is having more eyelids than the iris part than the iris pixels okay um, most of the times this is true with the data sets so in the beginning what we have done was just ignore this part while calculating calculate only with the s2 and s4 part in the beginning in the initially take only the part s2 and s4 and calculate and later another remove the different remove noise removal technologies were adopted but initially to calculate with using nir uh, image the parts which are mostly likely occluded with the um, eyelids and eyelashes are uh, say ignored remaining parts are taken for the further calculation and uh, with the with those raised kernels different size of raised kernels this original unwrapped iris can be you can see here Um, the output of the iris code or iris template with different sized kernel here and the experiment is proved that after certain level there is no need to increase the kernel here because um, up to 15 and uh, this during the experiment this is an empirical result actually up to size raise size kernel size 15 we were getting very good results and after that we, that's it it was not a good result so uh, whatever result we have got is from the size 15 into 15 itself so these are the uh, performance of rfic1 and rfic2 approaches welcome back madam okay ma'am okay shall we start yes madam yes madam and let me tell you one more thing for the beginners uh, or for the students over here you can try masex implementation of uh, say dogman's paper you get the code also open so it's available open source so even you get the data set also you can try those implementation part uh, it's uh, i have worked with Uh, matlab even you can work on any other um, platforms so that will be the best part for the beginners let me share the screen again okay 
so we were talking about so i think we have already come to the demo part actually isn't it i told you that the initial part was taken for one hour but i finished it early so with the raised transformation we have already shifted to demo part here um with this rfic1 and rfic code we are getting a good recognition result here and given the comparison with dct also this geber is mm, the implement even masex implementation is there here this is masex implementation geber is and okay if you anyway these slides are with organizers you can find this paper here and this one is tried with raise plus geber means two bits of geber and two bits of raise uh, not exactly fusion but at the time of say comparison two bits of geber the iris code was constructed using two bits of geber and two bits of raise and this is rfic1 proposed and this is i mean this is the one we have tried and we are getting good results here with the uh, iitt data you can find the you can observe here the d prime rate is higher okay and even this is also good here with ubi this version 2 this is visual uh, wavelength data set whereas these three are uh, nir data sets let me quickly go through this i roc curves and with the different data sets um normally geber and raise are compared compared here because the geber was the one which uh, used by dogman and he was getting the patent on that itself uh only thing is size of geber is um, larger like to get the same result we have used here in during our experiments we have used in the geber kernel of size 81 to 81 but whereas the same thing is obtained in, in fact more better results is obtained we, we have obtained the better results with raised kernel of size 15 into 15 that's a one advantage over of raised over geber now with this we'll move on to the another model another feature extraction model itself late after that i'll come back to uh, iris segmentation models so this is using taylor series expansion tsc we all know that tsc is a better estimation function it's a this is used for estimate the function in a small neighborhood okay with multiple scales uh and hence it is it can be used for used to extract the localized variations around the point of expansion correct uh these are all the basics everybody knows about taylor series expansion um, this is around the um, so you can say uh, around a neighborhood of a x is any point around the neighborhood in a single dimensional space and we all know that when it is when only the partial sum is taken then this this infinite series can be expressed like this so that this n rn is tending to zero as n tending to infinity okay so we are interested in this part the partial sum of this tsc okay people have worked on this Uh, the comparison between tsc and even fourier transformation you can find the paper on that also so we are interested in this so we have considered here the image as two dimensional function two variable function so this is an ex this is the expression for two dimensional tsc but what we have done is we have used directional derivatives here now while extracting the feature from iris code using tsc what we have done is we have considered the angular sum see our one minute our iris code 
her IDs code after the normalization or after unwrapping, it will be something like this. Okay. And this is our radial direction we have considered and I'm talking about. And this is the angular direction I'm talking about. Fine. So angular sum, what, I'm, what we mean is we have taken the sum of this um, partial sum along this direction. Okay, along, um, so you can say theta direction. Similarly, another one we have is radial sum and this is taken along this direction. Okay. Now, taking this partial sum along theta direction and along r direction, calling it as angular sum and radial sum, but the question comes from, for these values, epsilon and um, say delta, this theta minus eta is referred as epsilon. This is a small neighborhood along the around the value uh, around the value eta. Similarly, this is small neighborhood around xi here. If theta and r are variables. Theta and r are points around this in the in the neighborhood of eta and xi. So we have taken this. Uh, we have taken these m and n as some scaling factors. So theta maximum and theta minimum is considered the to calculate this epsilon i. Similarly, r, r is, iris r, i, radius of iris and radius of pupil are taken to calculate this delta values. And we have referred here, in this case, we have referred these as scales. Epsilon and delta are referred as scales and by changing different, by putting different values, by using different values here, we said multiple scale here. That is the meaning of scales. So with a given iris, angular sum of the TSE is calculated, that's partial sum of TSE along theta direction and radial sum is calculated along R direction. These are the results here for taking some particular scale here, say epsilon and delta one, we are getting the result something like this on the image, input image, okay. And this is by taking the second scale, epsilon two and delta two. Similar to rays, we can find out the 1D signals. This is along angular sum and this is along radial sum. Okay. Now this is how we are obtaining the, I have called it as in this code, I have called it as theta t horizontal and t vertical. That means this is angular and this is vertical to get the sum, a partial sum of it. Okay. If we have not mentioned the scale, if scale is not given, we have taken the scale as first one. Okay. <clears throat> Otherwise, scale has to, order has to be mentioned and scale has to be mentioned. So this finally gives us vertical sum and horizontal sum. <clears throat> okay, this is the algorithm which we are getting. The uh, partial sum is here. And then again we went for uh, phase encoding. Angular sum gives us two bits actually on zero crossings. And here this has been also tried with not only zero crossings, this has been also tried with mean of the values. So if this is greater than the mean value, then take it as one, lesser than the mean value, take it as zero. That is another trial we have done. Um, so, how to get a, um, how to get this binary code, iris code? Take the unwrapped iris, take the unwrapped input iris and then go for zero crossings here for both the, with the angular sum and with the radial sum so that each pixel here is encoded using two bits, one from angular sum and another one is from, another one is obtained from radial sum. Then, so this is the formula for that. Then, when you 
do this with different scales so the here angular sum and radial sum are taken with one particular scale do that the same thing with different scales here different sigma uh, epsilon and different deltas each scale would give you um it would generate two bit iris score here so when you take n number of scales you will have two n bit iris score okay again bit level fusion we mean appending these bits one after the other then the question arises here where do we stop isn't it what should be the value of n small n here how many scales have to be taken okay. to answer that we have considered and there's one more thing what is the what should be the order here when where should we stop with the uh, when we are taking the higher order derivatives for um, tsc taylor series expansion what should be the highest order taken correct okay. so and one more thing here when you say up to first second third or fourth order it is it's okay but when the order increases order of the derivative increases noise also increases so that has been checked experimentally actually go take the second order take the sum up to second order third order fourth order and fifth order onwards you don't get any change in your result okay that has been checked here first second third order even up to fourth order it's okay hence onwards the result would be uh, that much affected and fails also when you take say again this has been checked experimentally scale is up to 1 2 3 fine the result is increasing but when it's fourth and fifth that is not there is no much difference with the result so i can represent it graphically this will explain that better how to set the scale okay so up to 3 it is uh, this is ee -E, uh, equal error rate so equal error rate should be less first Uh, scale is one, two, three. It was fine. It was working fine. But when scale is four, uh, for some data sets, it is um, increasing. Isn't it? Er, er, which which is supposed to be less, that is increasing with the scale here. Similarly, uh, with the d prime values, d prime values are supposed to be greater, are supposed to be in, increased actually. but here after some value there is no change in the d prime value and with some data sets it is coming down okay that that is how we set the parameters for while calculating the tsc so that parameter set is okay it is given in the paper now the parameters which we have taken to get this particular result okay um on i iitd data sets we are getting the genuine and imposter distribution something like this using tsc and you can observe here um, there is a clear distinguished uh, distinction between genuine scores and our imposter scores so that um, error rates will be less and these are the results we got it's a comparison with dct gaber rfic1 rfic2 and then tsc so and there is again one more uh, i can say fusion here fusion thing with tsc and rays uh, so remember again by fusion i mean here simply over uh, appending the values there taking the bits from tsc and taking the bits from rays we have got the better results here comparing with this but of course here we are increasing the size of the iris template so already tsc gives you multiple tsc gives you the 2n bit coding plus if you take rays rfic1 it gives 5 bits and rfic2 if you take it gives 2 6 bits so uh the size of the iris code is increasing when we have taken two 
filters like this here, the output of the two filters. But anyway, uh, we are getting good results. The D prime with IITD is six point something is good result. And uh, one more point with TSA is uh, the time taken here is with the TSA it's because the convolution is used here. The, it is only the say first, second, third, fourth order derivatives. Hence, the time taken is very less. You can observe here compared with Ray's, Gaber, DCT, Log, Log Gaber, and TSC. So, this has taken less time comparative. Okay. There is, with, along with this, actually, we have two of the feature extraction method. Now let me explain some of the iris segmentation and localization methods. Okay. Uh, first one is along with the, uh, it's, a, it's a framework, you can say, but it is using the partial swam optimization and whole transform for iris uh, localization and uh, finding the boundary parameter. And then we have used, uh, say, multi-patch approach to find out the iris values, the best iris and maybe the iris which should not be taken for further calculation. So that we have used uh, and multi-patch patch approach. Here we have used fuzzy Siemens clustering. Okay, let me explain that. And then uh, after we um, say segmented the iris, we have tried all those things, log gaber, rays, and TSC filters to extract the features. And weighted Hamming distance is used to find the, uh, because we have given the weights to each patches here, and hence weighted Hamming distance is, is used, the metric, to find the dissimilarity scores. So this is our input I. This explains the proposed framework. This is our input iris image and uh, particle swam optimization is a, a clustering technique which uses the segmentation iris. So we have used it for iris segmentation part. And actually here we have used um, canny edge detect, uh, detection method. So you can use any edge detector here to find the um, say course uh, so parameters are of course map, edge map using CHT then a circular hole transform. You get pupil as well as the it depends on the initial value here, the seed value which you give. You get pupil as well as detected iris. Okay. So after this when um, boundary parameters are detected we have so many unwanted things here. Isn't it? Uh, which is uh, pixels which are not part of the irises or even though the pixels are part of the iris but are occluded with something so there's the, which we which are not useful which are not useful for the further calculation so that what we have done is so this a nice removal technology is divided this into n parts take number of sectors here and take the number of tracks so that um, for example suppose 16 uh, patches are done here, taking two tracks and eight six sectors. Uh, when this part is reduced, your accuracy will be more. So take it something like this, and then using FCM, each part is uh, given the weightage. Okay, so this is no iris at all, no iris at all, and to do this, to say. Give the weight or the input to FCM was the statistical features of these patches. Statistical features of each patch is given the input to the FCM. And um, there are some, of course, mismatches. This is identified as zero. Of course, this is the best iris, best, not the best. This is a moderate iris part. These four, the one which is given as four is. You can consider them as 
best i i this part see anyway after this uh, when these batches are uh, given with the weight assigned with the weights we use weighted hamming distance before that let me just tell you one thing that um we using pso clustering uh, method and method we can and cho cho um, cht i'm sorry circular hose transform we get some of these results of segmentation or localization something this with the different data sets here okay now uh, this is the model which i have already explained when we are, when these patches are assigned with weights here okay then uh, we calculate so the you can say these two are different um, say weights calculated using the uh, using the weights of each part rather okay then these two parts are combined calculated with combined are uh, used to calculate the hamming distance right the weight of suppose i use these two part to calculate the hamming distance then i'll have two weights here isn't it so one of them is chosen to find out the uh, weighted mean hamming distance and the, again the question arises which one has to be chosen i hope it's clear here um, each part is assigned with some weight suppose this is one part and this is the second part we can say this is the one part and this is the second part calculate the hamming distance of this each part and these two parts i have separate weights actually then we use we cannot use both so we have used one of the weights to calculate the weighted mean hamming distance so that how to use one of them isn't it so four strategies are adopted here one is simply use the arithmetic mean of the two weights another one is use the geometric mean of the two weights and third one is use the maximum value simply maximum weightage value of the two and the fourth strategy is if both are zeros use zero and otherwise use the maximum value so as good as maximum value then with this weight weights here with the calculated weights calculate the weighted mean hamming distance okay so experiments are done with these four different strategies and we can observe here the strategy s4 and s3 almost almost uh, s2 the uh, geometric mean this geometric distance geometric mean actually and this s4 was giving good recognition weights okay um the re results are compared with different data sets here and let us quickly go with anadan uh recognition framework using fragile weights okay after completing this we'll take up the i think we can take up the questions so but this is this one is the fragile weights oh, okay already we have seen this fine when we have say image is something like this when uh there are degraded images or images in unconstrained this is called unconstrained imaging uh that is when the people or the, the person is not interested in uh, not interested to be identified in such cases you have taken the images let us assume and then and when even with the nir camera or with the visual uh, wavelength camera we have some parts of irises like this so when a person is taken uh, person's eye is taken like this and uh, if the gallery image is something different in the in the gallery image this part is not there let's assume 
then the value of the bit over here after the iris code can calculation will be different from that which is the one with the gallery similarly here this part is a reflection part so in the gallery iris this part may not be there this reflection may not be there so maybe it's in authentication system also so the bit which is giving the value over here the output as 0 and 1 here is different from the bit which has been saved in the gallery same thing with this part okay these bits are called fragile bits and they cause the problem with the recognition rate okay uh, this has been shown here to uh, iris image of the same person okay uh, with the reflections at different places can see so this is these two are the uh, unwrapped irises colored of course to make the things very clear and this is the fragile bit because this part is or, or else you can consider this part here maybe you can say here also it is um, occluded but consider this part this part is and this part so uh, iris of the same person and these bits will be having two different values similarly this part gives you two different values so these bits are fragile bits and uh, the reason already we have seen maybe because of occlusion by eyelids or maybe because of specular reflections these four are the um, iris unwrapped iris of the same person but we can see the different values here maybe the small pieces of specular iris reflection but uh, specular reflections but gives a um, say they damages the output actually accuracy rates okay some of the earlier works on fragile bits here uh, okay this i won't repeat again monogenic rays components because here also we have used the same um, say Uh, raise bits only raise transformation okay but with a slightly different manner um this is called raise signal based binary pattern rs bp okay so what we have done is this is your input iris and we have five uh, outputs of raise, after raise transformation first two is from say first order raise signals and these three are from second order raise signals okay uh each one is having some value here similarly stirable rays already gives us uh it, it's it's actually a matrix of 1 to 6 depending on your uh input value and those values are binarized here okay by Bina are binary encoded now use your 1d phase encoding or zero crosses so that you get five bit already we have seen five binary bits and this is three binary bits here using these eight binary bits we have designed a binary pattern of our uh, ray signals ray signal based binary patterns here so these are five bits from the ray transformation already and three bits from stirable rays okay and we can see this is input image and this is the image after we obtain the um, rsbp image. this is we can say rsbp image okay this is the one we have but this is the color map of rsbp image okay now see this we have feature extraction technology using uh, rsbp filter itself this is these are two i input iris images they are unwrapped um, pattern and then we have rsbp filter here okay now there is small change in the binary pattern actually this is this method is adopted using the paper
by, let me tell you that, using a paper by one of our colleagues, Rajesh, D.S. Rajesh, Dr. D.S. Rajesh and Professor B.H. Shekhar. And this is representation of RSBP in as 1D iris code using this method here. So till now I have taken all those iris codes as 2D, I mean uh, binary iris code image, but here, and that was a matrix. Here, our iris code is 1D uh, iris code. It is the, it's by using the method given by um, Dr. Rajesh and Dr. B.H. Shekhar. Okay. So like that, I have two color maps here. This is the highlighted part here. And then our input iris is again divided into multi patches. But here, instead of statistical features, we have extracted RSBP features. Okay. Once again, that the, in the previous case, I have explained uh, statistical features were the input to FCM, but now RSBP features are input to FCM. And once again, uh, it has been weighted like this. Best iris and not so best, not at all iris, etc. So when you consider the uh, iris code, uh, this is first iris code here after weighting this something like that. And take each part here from e both the irises. And now I I we cannot use Hamming distance because as I have already told you, this part is not a matrix now. It is an iris code with numbers. So we use Euclidean distance here. And each part is given with a weight. So later we are using weighted uh, mean Euclidean distance. Okay. So once again, to find which of the, uh, like here also we have a weight, here also we have a weight assigned with, which of them is taken. Again, geometric mean, um, we have used the same, <laughs> criteria here you have used the same method and geometric mean is adopted finally and these are the um, patches which we are uh, getting in these different data sets okay um, how many patches are used for training and etc So if you are interested, I'll explain this. I'll, in fact, you can refer the paper also for this um, taking of different things for different uh, training and say, uh, I mean, how many patches are taken for training and how many patches are taken for testing, etc. Let's, let me explain that later. Once again, the two scenarios here. Now it is with the multi patches and S2 without multi S1 is with the multi patches and S2 is without multi patches. Okay, you can observe here RSVP with multi patches scenario is giving us good result. It, it is 6.1 here and the comparison with the state of the art results. Different data sets, different versions of the data sets are taken and it's experimented with these codes. With the NIR images, um, you can easily locate the, easily in the sense you can precisely locate the, um, say, iris boundaries. But when it comes to visual wavelength uh, data set, so boundary parameters may not give you the actual an uh, correct answers. Okay. Um, 
this is maybe not interested in this. Let me tell you one more thing here. Okay, what I wanted to tell you was, see we have experimented um, with taking both the eyes, like so till now I have discussed, this is an important aspect for um, the beginners. When we consider these eyes for compare, for training or for testing, whatever, we consider the, the data set will have both. Data set will have left eyes, a set of left eyes and set of right eyes. So while doing these experiments, all these experiments, we have taken only left eyes for our experiment. But lately, in this slide, I'm showing you, these are the ex experiments taken with uh, both the eyes. Say, um, but see, uh, iris, um, the iris pattern of both the eyes of same person is are different. So they are not the same. Hence, when considering the dual eye, we cannot forget or we cannot um, say consider them as one modality, but even these are not um, bimodality also. So what we have done is here we have taken only left eyes for even both testing and tra training and testing. Here we have done some experiment, taking some of the left eyes and some of the right eyes uh, together as for training and then considering the remaining left and right eyes for training. But anyway, dual eye method has given us good results. So you can observe here with RFIC2, we are getting 99% of recognition rate and 6.08 D prime value. But people must be interested in knowing. Okay, I don't have that slide here. Uh, see, the, the reason experiment with different eye different left and eye, right eyes here so but and the result we have got is taking say equal number of left eyes and equal number of right eyes while training and equal number say uh, while testing also you take equal number of left and right eyes so that gives us good result that uh, the, that uh, experiment shows that um, for a same person, both the eyes or irises taken from both the eyes are totally different. So you experiment with left eye, you may get good result or you experiment with right eye, get good results. But considering while taking both, you have to be careful about how many eyes are taken for training and how many for testing. Okay. Mm. I think... I thought I have, I had this slide, but maybe in a different, um, I think it is in the different um, file, I suppose. so I'm not getting it. So, okay. Anyway, this is another, this, that, that is what the first one I wanted to discuss. Um, two different eyes, that's a dual eye approach. And one more thing I wanted to discuss was the combination of these filters, you can call them as filters, um, say stacked filters otherwise. Combination of these filters, Gaber alone, rays alone, uh, may not give you good result, but when we, when we combine them, maybe the size is increased, but in case of authentication, that might not be so not a factor. So we can get a good result when we combine these filters. We can we have simply stacked those filters and we got the good result with that. Okay. And oh, so it gives us good result. These RSBP has given us good result with the uh, identification also. Here, uh, rank one accuracy is 99 with 
IIT database, of course, IIT is a um, NIR database. Okay. <coughs> Comparison with the various, uh, say, these iris B, mass x iris b iris very iris os iris these are all available as open source in the internet like you get for this iris b also very all the for all these you get even data set also you get um, the experimental part also you can download and experiment it with your um, environment and <clears throat> uh, we have these genuine and imposter scores distribution, probability distribution with uh, some of the methods here, mass X implementation, R, et cetera, you can see here. These are available the, as open source. OSIRIS is also available here. Okay, this one is suppose this TSC and RSVP has given us very good results. And that's all I wanted to do. Madam? Ha, madam. Sorry, Nani. I just acknowledge it. Thank you, Mantel, and the acknowledgement. Okay. Yes. So now it's a There was one slide I actually wanted to show. I think I have missed it while, say, I, I think I was discussing with you the other system was not working properly. Okay, so okay. While mm. taking this thing from that system to this system, I have missed that slide. That was actually an important slide which okay. was showing us that uh, left eye and right eye patterns, how many eyes okay. are there. Okay, anyway, I will include that while posting this to you, while mailing it. Okay, okay. Uh -huh -huh. Thank you, madam. Okay. There is uh, the first question has arrived from Dr. C.K. Rupa. Okay. Uh, madam asked, like, can you suggest the availability of a spectacle image database? Uh, okay. Um, this with the specular reflections. Okay. Uh, is it so, Rupa, madam? Specular images? Uh, specular okay, reflections. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh. Okay, fine. Uh, shall I um, stop sharing or? Yes, madam. You can stop sharing. If you have the uh, component in the slide and you want to show, you can. Otherwise, you can stop sharing. No, that is better, I suppose. Uh, now, with the databases available, UB Iris 2, okay, I have, oh, this is a good question, Rupa madam. Actually, because I have forgotten one point here. I said these databases are freely available, right? Uh, but you have to write them, for example, this UB Iris, I, I, I think I missed it. These, this the database is, uh, you have to write them, write the author, and uh, you have you should have a verified email id or you should have some letter from your uh, say mentor then they will give you the pass key using that you can use these databases this this the last line is almost all images are with specular reflections even this mmu database also is having that variety some but this ub iris is uh, most difficult database, I can say. And uh, even with Cassia, you have some versions of Cassia. Uh, but Cassia is NIR. UB Iris is VW database. And this is one more point. And this mobile uh, Iris database is more challenging than UB Iris 2. This also, you uh, MICHE, you have to search there, you will get some, you get a email ID, you have to write them. Write them and uh, then they will send you the pass key. You can download it, but you cannot open it. So they will give you the pass key to open it. I hope I have answered this question. Rupa madam, is the, uh, are you okay with this answer or are you expected? Okay. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, if there are no questions, madam, I have a question. You can, yes, madam, you can stop sharing. Like you spoke about the dual eye. Mm, yes, uh, actually, uh, is, yeah, as you said, it is as if uh, same as considering uh, two different uh, iris for experimentation. Uh, is there any database or work that has taken the iris of the same person in spite of knowing that there are, there are two different entities? But still, they worked on the same person, two you know, iris. And is there any application upon it? Two questions. No, there are very less, very few papers on this. Few of them okay. I have listed out. I'll name it them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw it. Uh -huh. mm. Because most of the work is on either on left eye, normally left okay. eye or on mm. right eye. But okay. uh, surprisingly, all the data sets are having both eyes. All the data sets will give you separately the list of left eyes and right eyes. Oh, of the same person. Of the same person. Oh, that okay, is okay. The way you can experiment. That is the way. Okay. So how does this application, real-time applications goes, madam? Is it works with only uh, single iris or uh, ah, focus on both? No. In case of authentication, authentication. Iris, yes, because the, if they take the picture of only left eye, even in our biometric systems also, even identification, they take only one side picture. Okay, Maybe okay. Identification, mm. when mm. it is fraud detection and all, then you might need both the eyes. Okay, okay. Because in other, I, I think they take uh, both the iris. Both the iris. Both the iris. But uh, uh, any application where iris has been used for authentication using, I mean, in the other... Uh, uh, you know, usage? Um, uh, Indian Aadhaar system, I still don't know because they have not revealed it formally. But okay. the UAE, the Arab Emirates, they have already mm -hmm. made, they are, they are using it in the airport and they have mm -hmm. already made a data set on that. Okay, that is, okay. The, the paper mm -hmm. is available online. Uh, I couldn't download the data set yet. Okay. But uh, publicly it's been used into use. Yes, yes, they, have, they are using it. Okay, okay. Uh, one more question is here, madam, from Dr. Deepo. Uh, hi, madam. Does iris of animals and birds differ like that of humans? <laughs> yeah, there is a paper which reads on iris. Uh, animals means it is on cow eyes. That the okay. paper is on cow eyes. Uh, mm. That I have not given you. That at least I have not given. But mm. uh, apart from that, I have not found any uh, works on animals. Maybe okay. I am not aware of it. But okay, there is a paper okay. on iris, uh, iris of cows. Okay, okay. It's long back. Mm -hmm. One more question. Can you suggest la uh, latest feature extraction algorithm for iris? Uh, this is what, thank you for the question. This is what I have forgotten actually. Uh, we have said only this handmade, handcrafted uh, feature extraction, isn't it? This During this uh, two hours, we have discussed only that. But actually, there are, um, you can say, deep learning models. The, there are so many latest papers and people are working on. So nowadays, it is uh, deep iris, deep face, something like that, right? So there are many CNN models on iris. Uh, maybe uh, they are one-to-one -one models. So they don't follow this say localization pattern and then the output of localization, nothing like that. So one to one, you give your iris to that and it is a CNN or whatever it is, the iris model, and it gives you the output, whether it is accepted or rejected or something. So there are deep learning mo models available on iris. Deep iris is uh, available on online also. Thank you for the question. This is what I had pointed out, but I have forgotten. Uh, any more questions? Um, oh, okay. Well, uh, I have one more question, madam. You were talking about like, uh, uh, first we need to identify whether it is the iris component or not. 
uh, you spoke about that in your uh, some 45th slide or something like that uh, can you throw one or two sentences on that like uh, where exactly uh, we find other images which is similar to iris and uh, uh, any sort of such uh, no is nothing like other images similar to iris but when it comes to eye uh, say um, iris is a smaller ring like structure isn't it so people may or your algorithm may mistake mistake with the uh, eyelid part eyelid ah, yeah, part the, yeah 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 that is what i was like uh, trying to ask okay eyelid mm -hmm. part may be taken as iris part or sometimes scala is may not be that bright scala is supposed to be bright and white color isn't it sometimes it may not be because of the illusion and sometimes scala may be uh, wrongly taken as iris part so that thing is there only in the, in the eye itself um, that iris component may not be recognized properly mm -hmm. that is a threat for iris recognition yes like in the unconstrained uh, scenario for a uh, person identification using the face first they identify the face component like yeah. uh, then they identify the person as so similarly yeah. here first we have to you know extract the iris component and yes. then go with it mm -hmm. pixels which are really uh, meant for iris pixels yes. which are being used for uh, iris mm -hmm. okay and i have one more point that i have forgotten actually uh, yes, recently recently i have some like i have read two papers that those two papers even i have forgotten to list out uh, the people he, he is from ireland the people are working on so it is not actually iris biometry people are working on uh, they take iris uh, say pupil radius and uh, iris radius they calculate the ratio of it and based on their researches based on that uh, they are uh, so probably finding out some say diseases oh okay uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, their interest is actually some collaboration work with the computer science um, okay say, okay uh, computer mm -hmm. scientists so that okay. you can give them a model which calculates exactly the iris pupil ratio okay okay mm -hmm. so they are not talking mm -hmm. about the next feature extraction part okay so okay give them mm -hmm. the iris feature ratio then based on that they uh, they will have their own method to you know, find out the diseases and okay, those are all okay. mobile images people are mm -hmm. sitting at home and sending their iris image to mobiles so they uh, and right now they are doing it in their paper they have explained right now they are doing it manually okay mm -hmm. so they need a machine learning tool for that so this may be a good point to start with for a new researcher okay okay uh, because the aim of this uh, you know fdp is uh, uh, research avenues in biometrics using low cost devices my next question is like uh, uh, how does these uh, you know uh, what to call uh, iris quality varies from uh, de you know device to uh, device like as you said we have cameras and uh, cameras the handheld cameras and mobile cameras any other specific uh, device uh, which is of low cost and still give uh, high uh, accuracy uh, okay when you if you go for nir cameras they are not really low cost devices right mm -hmm. so um, so the deva the algorithm must be sh should be such that uh, your uh, camera your mobile camera should suffice and it should you should be able to um, like you should be able to authenticate or identify with that image itself Mm -hmm. and to some extent it is working now because we have uh, some of the cameras some of the electronic gadgets you can say which opens by with your iris so that works with the same uh, inbuilt camera which is in your uh, ordinary mobile okay okay mm -hmm. so, so that thing is working now but still identification may not be that easy with that mm -hmm. for uh, authentication purpose in a very i know secured environment uh, they might not rely on it Correct. is it so uh, you can easily open your gadget with your iris um uh -huh. this picture okay any other questions from the participants 
anybody in the team is working on iris for your uh, doctoral work but as you said uh, one interesting uh, factor is like <clears throat> finding the disease of a person through this uh, considering uh, iris as a you know component of their interest is really interesting yes uh, this may not this be biometrics yes. yeah yeah i know yeah yeah, yeah. for disease identification that's what uh, another uh, discussion taken uh, with uh, uh, nagendra swami sir like as uh, rupa madam mentioned gate might not be used for recognition purpose but as the uh, quality of uh, curing uh, of a patient uh, they are using it in the medical application so um, the other way the other day murli sir was talking about collaboration work isn't it So yes, this yes. may be a very good collaboration, collaborate in this um, research. Yes, yes. Um, It doesn't need a power actually. Yes. Power. In fact, ours being uh, uh, you know science university and we have a medical university also uh, with JSS, we can definitely think in this uh, direction okay. Okay. because an exclusive ophthalmology department is there in JSS Medical College. Okay. I'll send the papers to you, ma'am. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. So that I can share with the participants also, Correct. Correct. along with the slides. Correct. Okay. If there are no questions, uh, we can uh, wind up the session. I wholeheartedly thank uh, Sharda, madam, for uh, such a elaborative, uh, you know, discussion presentation and so on. Uh, we are really honored to have your presentation, madam. and i really wanted this sort of uh, presentation also where uh, the speaker would talk about a specific set of uh, you know feature extraction technique uh, accuracy measurements and the results that is been obtained because uh, there is a you know task of uh, presenting the article discussion in the next week and we have shared two articles so uh, this is what uh, even the atl fdp um, you know expects like so it was really uh, you know good uh, uh, presentation from you thank you all at edli and in the next uh, coming year days we expect you to come over to mysore in person and deliver the uh, talk madam mm -hmm. thank you thank you, thank you once again i hope i have done justice to Yo, what yeah yeah very have. much very much yeah that, that's what one of these you know participants says wish we had this offline as well where the participants could have hands on session practice as well Uh, definitely mohammed uh, we shall uh, make an arrangement for this in the coming days uh, for exclusive such uh, you know interest participants thank you thank you so much thank you thank, thank you, thank you once much. again thank you madam thank you all the participants we can we shall uh, wind up today and meet tomorrow exactly at 6:50 tomorrow we have at another uh, eminent speaker dr javed Uh, and that will be again an, another interesting uh, talk tomorrow thank you all good night thank you madam